My hands were shaking when I reached for the doorknob. I paused, closed my eyes, clenched my fists, and focused on the pinch of my nails biting into the soft flesh of my palms. Inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale. I had to keep it together, had to be strong, again. You can do this, Kendall, I told myself. You have to, for Kevin, for yourself. You will be okay. It was the same thing I'd been telling myself since the day my parents came down with the virus more than two weeks ago. But it was harder to believe now. Things were so much worse than I'd thought they'd be. At least back then I'd been in contact with Liv, had her mom to give me advice, had hope that mom and dad just might make it. I'd even been stupid enough to think that if they didn't, Kevin and I would have help. None of that was true anymore. None of it. My parents had done their best to keep my brother and me safe. They'd quarantined themselves in our basement, like Liv's mom suggested, and refused to let us come down. It had kept us from getting sick, but hadn't protected us from the horror as the virus ravaged their bodies. Even from up here, Kevin and I had been able to hear their gurgling coughs, their moans of pain, their screams of agony as the end came. Then there was silence. It was awful, because I'd known it meant they were gone, but it hadn't even been the worst part. No, this was being alone, having the responsibility of my brother on my shoulders at the age of 14, and knowing my best friend's family was to blame for the situation. They could have helped, should have. Liv had her mom and dad, her stepmom, and even her great-grandma with her. But Kevin and I had no one. I'd thought Liv's family would be our salvation. Had thought that even if my parents were taken from me, they would be there to help. It hadn't worked out that way. Thinking about it made my hands shake harder, and I dug my nails deeper into my palms, pressing them into the skin until I thought they would draw blood. So much had changed. So much had disappeared. The world I'd known, my parents, my best friend, it was all gone, had all been stolen, and now I had nothing. Now, that wasn't true. I still had Kevin, my little brother. He was just ten years old, a kid. He was my everything now. Before all this, he'd annoyed the shit out of me. He was such a baby, always getting his way, always getting in the way when I had my friends over, always wanting my attention. I hadn't thought I even liked him. He'd been that annoying. But things were different now. Now when I saw him, all I could see was how scared and hurt he'd looked when I'd had to tell him mom and dad were gone. Like an abused puppy. That was what he'd reminded me of, what he still reminded me of. I had to take care of him, had to make sure we made it out of this, had to find somewhere safe, someone who would help, had to find a new future for us, somehow. How, though? How would I do it? Like every other time I asked myself those questions, I thought about Liv's bitch of a mom. She'd refused to help, and I hated her for it, but I also couldn't stop thinking about her. Unfortunately, it was because of the books she wrote, books that took place in worlds like this one. I'd only read a few. They had all been about old people, but I couldn't stop thinking about the ones I had read, about all the things the people in them had done to survive, about all the things they'd faced. Those books would help me figure out what I needed to do next they had to. First, though, I had to find some food. I took another breath. Deeper this time. Wind blew in from the open windows, rustling my dark hair and making goosebumps pop up on my bare arms. It was chilly, but we had to leave the windows open. The smell was too bad otherwise. <laughs>